The history of any country is always bound with unrevealed secrets, sacred places and riddles which scientists have been trying to solve for decades. Kazakhstan is an ancient land. Its history keeps a lot of glorious names, events and facts, some of which are still covered with myths and legends. The Time Puzzle crew tries to understand the intricacies of ancient and modern mysteries of history, traveling around the country and visiting its most amazing corners. In this episode, touching and tragic love story that happened more than 800 years ago. Almost every nation has beautiful and legendary love stories. More often they tell about lovers who wanted to be together against all the odds. And almost always it's a story with a sad ending. In Kazakhstan, there are many such legends, but among them there is one which is not simply handed down by word of mouth for centuries, but also has real proof of the existence of its characters. Studying this legend, the film crew stumbled upon information which is not known to everyone. What secrets are kept by Tectomas? We often heard such legends from residents, legends about underground passages. Why is Taraz region considered one of the most sacred regions of our country? This mausoleum is a sacred place for locals, as according to legends, there is the remains of one of the mayors who was the first Muslim in this territory. Shah and Karakhan's story, myth or truth? There are only two monuments of love and loyalty in the world, the Taj Mahal in India and the mausoleum of Aisha Bibi. How can ancient Mazars tell us about important events in history? What was Karakhan really like and why did he become considered a saint after his death? Watch this and much more in Time Puzzle. Mazars and mausoleums have always been revered in Kazakh lands. Besides, these are monuments of architecture, people learn history from them. And also, they keep a huge amount of secrets and legends. My name is Andrei Slojan, it is the Time Puzzle. And today we'll learn about some Mazars and mausoleums of Jambul region. In the center of Taraz, there is a majestic Mazar, which is usually visited by pilgrims from all over the country. The Mausoleum of Karakhan. The love story of this man became one of the main sacral legends of Kazakhstan. There are lots of its versions. The crew of the Time Puzzle decided to learn more of this mysterious story about two lovers. The search for truth began from the place of rest of Karakhan. Tanshal Panjus Baiva, a local guide, told us about this building. The mausoleum of Karakhan was built in the 11th and 12th centuries in honor of the ruler of Taraz, the famous Karakhan Baba. From 1836 to 1936, almost a hundred years, the city of Taraz was named in honor of Karakhan Baba, Auliya Atta. This name was given by the inhabitants of this city. There are many legends about it. One of them says, once Karakhan had a dream. In a dream he saw an old man in a white robe. And this elder said to Karakhan, if you convert to Islam, then the next day you will become one of the wise Khans, even the king of animals. A lion will bow before you. The next day everything that the elder said became true, and Karakhan Baba became a wise Khan. One of the legends even says that Karakhan rode a lion. 
However, historians believe that this is just a way to describe how much power and inner strength this person possessed. As if not only people, but also animals worshipped him. This opinion is shared by a person who devoted most of her life to the study of the story of the Jambal region, the head of a travel agency in the city of Taraz, Albina Weimar. Even considering the fact that I'm an experienced tour guide, I didn't hear the legend about the lion. There are a lot of speculations and riddles about the beautiful love of Karakan and Aisha. There are more than 29 legends, and everyone tells, interprets it in his own way. In most variants, the legend about Aisha and Karakan tells that a girl from a noble family and a commoner fell in love with each other. Khan forbade a girl to marry a young man and Aisha fled from home to her lover. But on the way to him, she was bitten by a snake and the girl died. Karakan's personality is still a mystery to historians, but the fact that he was not a single man can be clearly seen. That's what the main custodian of the Monuments of Ancient Taraz Reserve Museum, Anna Krokosheva, tells about it. Karakhan is the title of ruler. This is not a personal name. Inside the burial, there are no inscriptions, no personal name of the deceased. In other words, we do not know what his name was. Karakhan is just a title. But in the legend, he is mentioned as Karakhan, the ruler of Taraz. That is, here you can say that people called him Karakhan. Although history says clearly, Karakhan means the supreme ruler. According to historians, the Kaluk tribes played the leading role in the formation of the Karakhanid state, which inhabited the territory of East Turkestan in the 10th and 12th centuries. The founder of the Karakhanid dynasty was Satu Bogra Khan, who in 1942 overthrew the ruler of Karluks in Balasagun and declared himself the Supreme Kagan. He called himself the Black Khan or Kara Khan. From that time on, all the rulers of the Karakhanids were called Karakhan. According to historians and researchers, Karakhan is none other than Shak Mahmud Boga Karakhan. During his reign, the Karakhanid state reached its peak. However, this version cannot be considered the only true one. Archaeologists and historians still have doubts about this. They are related to the fact that there are practically no written sources about the time of this man's rule. In the sources recorded in the 19th century, the name of the Kara Khan, Shak Mahmud Khan, is mentioned, and this man was buried exactly in the mausoleum of Kara Khan. But this was recorded from words of local people, so unfortunately, it is not a reliable source. But locals are sure that this is the burial place of Shak Mahmud Khan. The first person who put forward this version and documented it was a local historian, an ethnographer and a head of the Aulia Atta district, Vasily Kalaur. At the meeting of the general members of the Turkestan Club of Lovers of Archaeology, which took place on May the 5th, 1897, Kalawa described the Mazar as follows. This Mazar with a dome that has failed has an entrance from the south side, and the tomb has a direction from south to north. In my opinion, this Mazar deserves attention because of its ancient architecture. I have been gathering information from local residents about Karakan and about the mausoleum of Aulia Atta for a long time but I didn't achieve a great deal. In fact, this mausoleum is just a reconstruction of that mazar which was built over the grave of Karakan immediately after his death. The local people believed he was a saint, that this is the burial of a saint. Therefore, they raised funds and in the late 19th and early 20th century restored the mausoleum. Well, then there were no restorers. They did not think about restoring the building according to the historical plan. It's just that the residents have restored the mausoleum as they could. They used medieval masonry, medieval patterns, but could not reproduce exactly the ornamental part of the mausoleum. But they put several medieval bricks with ornaments into the walls. 
In the staircase, the carved bricks were preserved, which show how the mausoleum looked. Another scientist, Alexander Pankov, explored this mazar together with Kalaor. It was him who put forward the assumption, relying on legends and stories of locals, that right here, in this place, Mahmoud Bogo Karakan found his last resting place. Pankov managed to establish how many years he lived and what he did. He told about this at the meeting of members of the Turkestan Club of Lovers of Archaeology on May the 5th, 1897. According to Pankov, Karakan lived for 95 years, and for 15 years he was promoting Islam in this region. And for 40 years he was a local ruler. He was a man with an extraordinary temper. This is not to say that he was despotic, but he was so strong and powerful that he could stop an entire army, again as people say. Pankov had versions about the date of death and the origin of Karakan, but this is also non-verified information because this was told by Auliya Atta Kazi, Muslim judge Abdul. According to him, Karakan died in 886. He was a descendant of Khazrat Ali, who in turn was a cousin and companion of the Prophet Muhammad. In consequence, this version was indirectly confirmed by another researcher, a French political historian specializing in the study of Central Asia, Joseph Antoine Castanier in 1912. In his report at the next meeting of the Turkestan Club of Lovers of Archaeology, he said that this grave contains the remains of one Kaluk prince, who was the first of the ancient Turks who converted to Islam. The very building of the 11th and 12th centuries has hardly survived to the present day. At the end of the 19th century, the researchers found the mausoleum almost in a dilapidated state. Only the facade front part remained. But this part was laid out of burnt bricks, and the front side was decorated with carved ornament, carved bricks, similar to the mausoleum of Aisha Bibi. Therefore, researchers date the mausoleum of Aisha Bibi and Karakan to one period. This is the time of the dynasty of Karakanids. In addition, the French explorer studied the Mazar itself. Thanks to the scientist, modern historians have a brief description of the initial appearance of the building. Here is what Castanier writes. This monument is built of burnt bricks, with two delicate minarets of glazed bricks on the sides. Despite the adversity of time, it still retained its grandeur. Its facade is slightly hidden by trees. This part is the most preserved and the most interesting. Some of the drawings of the front wall look like a cross. In the Soviet times, this mausoleum was used as an archaeological site. Archaeological materials were collected there. The first city museum was opened near the mausoleum of Karakan. Later it became a regional museum. And for a long time the research was conducted just on the territory where the mausoleum of Karakan is now located. Actually, Rabat of the ancient Taraz was located there, which is the suburban part of the ancient city. When the city shrank in size, people began to leave graves there. And in fact, around the mausoleum of the Karakan there are graves, dating from the 12th century until the 20th century. The very burial of Karakan remained untouched. The scientists did not conduct any archaeological research there. Studies were conducted only around the perimeter of the mausoleum, outside its walls. Carved bricks and almost 30 kinds of ornaments were found there. Naturally, such walks were not the only way to learn about this state of affairs in the possessions. Karakan also traveled to nearby cities, accompanied by his friend and companion Sultan Mahmud. 
According to the surviving legends, he was considered a powerful and strong-willed person ready to give his life for his ruler. People consider Mahmoud the saint and they built a mazar in his honor, which is located in one of the most sacred places of the region. There is one more sacred place in Taraz, Taktumas. Let's go and see what it is. Since ancient times, Tektur Mas was considered sacred. There are many secrets, all kinds of legends and stories about it. The Mazar was erected just recently. It was rebuilt completely, as it was half ruined over the grave of Sultan Mahmud. This is a military leader who had no equals, and the minaret was put there because he did not know a single defeat, yet in one of them he died. This place is sacred, and people come there to pay tribute to the memory of that man. And this place itself, why it is sacred, why it is in this sacred map. Because all the spells can be broken at this place. All the bad spells can be cancelled here. And here all bad thoughts and dreams disappear. Taktur Mas is located on the right bank of the Talas River. In translation, this word means restless place or uneasy place. According to historians, in ancient times, tribes settled here who buried the deceased on this hill. The earliest burial places are considered burials which belong to the era of Zoroastrianism. The graves of Muslims and Christian historians are also found here. This place is covered with lots of legends and secrets. One of the main things is mysterious underground passages. Once, one of the journalists, Amantai Azakmetov, who later studied Taktur Mas, wrote a book called White Geese. It tells about the passages. It so happened that he's a friend of mine, and he was here. It was several years ago, and he went downstairs with one of the elders. Amantai Azakmetov began searching for these underground passages after hearing one legend. Allegedly, in the Zari's time, researchers had already descended there, but they had not studied the dungeon. Because having come down, they had the screams of children, the girls' laughter and the hail of goats' men, which frightened people and they gave up on their idea. According to Isaac Metov, the years of searching finished with success. They managed to find the entrance to the catacombs. He tells about this event in his book White Geese of the Wild Field. That's how he describes it. An incredible thing happened then at Mount Tector Mars. When we cleared the entrance, we found a horseshoe. It was possible to enter the cave leading a camel. But further, about 30 meters later, we faced some difficulties. We reached the deadlock. More precisely, there was an obstruction in front of us. However, scientists are skeptical about this data, and they consider it as literally fiction. Archaeologist Ruslan Boranbaev told us about it. From the first years of our work here, we often heard such legends among local residents. Legends about the underground passages. Archaeologists went there. They tried to find the underground passages which connected Tectomas with Taraz. According to the old timers, when they were children, they walked along these underground passages. But unfortunately, now they cannot find this place. There is a suggestion that there was a whole ramified network of such underground ways that connected the ancient city of Taraz, Tatomas and Akhetas fortress, which is located 47 kilometers from the city. We cannot just deny the presence of these underground passages because generally, yes, for rulers, for the nobility, they could take advantage of this in the face of danger. And of course, this is also a mystery. We need to continue research of this, because even the most fantastic things, they have the right to become true. We once went to Taktomas with locals, and we did research here, but unfortunately, we did not succeed.
Also, local legends tell us that it could be a secret entrance to the city for caravans with especially valuable goods. However, this version does not stand up to criticism, since for the city where dozens of caravans came every day, there was no reason in making secret passages for some special merchants. According to archaeologists, if these passages existed, they carried a different function. Of course, those underground passages, they were secret. This was known only to a very tiny number of people and of course, all this was kept in secret from the townsfolk. And this is connected with the fact that there are no mentions of these passages. Most likely, the underground passages existed on the territory of the citadel. That is, in the territory where the ruler himself lived. Unfortunately, half of the citadel it was dug by bulldozers in the 60s. A meat pavilion was built there. Now there is a modern museum and houses. But the part of the citadel, it is preserved. This is just where we are standing now. In addition, it is known for certain that all the caravans that came to Taraz entered the city through a bridge on the Talas River. By assumption, it was built in the 13th century. The road that led to it was the part of the northern branch of the Great Silk Road. Is it possible that the stone bridge across the Talas River was here, and these boulders are its remains? These stones are the remnants of this very small hill, which is a derelict. And next to it, there is a real unique bridge, which is called Red Bridge. There are many legends about this place among the locals. They say at night, here they see a white old man. Many of them say that this is the same old man who came to Karakan in a dream and told him to start preaching Islam. A lot of pilgrims from around the world come to visit this place. So Albina Vaima had a unique in her 35 years old guide practice on these places. A unique story that she cannot explain so far. I once had an excursion when a woman came from America, a woman of Indian descent. For 15 years she dreamed of the same place and she searched it on the internet and everywhere. You know, when she came here she found our company on the internet and agreed on an excursion. She was crying throughout the tour. She dreamed about this place. And as many people say, this place calls them for unexplained reasons. You can refer to Tectomas in different ways. Someone believes in its magical component. Others regard this site only from a historical point of view. Thanks to such objects as Tectomas and the mausoleum of Karakan, the researchers study the history of the region and the rulers who lived here in due time. One of the effects discovered by the researchers was that Karakan had many concubines. And this, once again, brings us back to the love story of the great ruler. No less interesting are the legends about Karakan's beloved Aisha Bibi. There are also several versions of it. The legend of Aisha Bibi and Karakan is about incredible love. In general, you know, there are only two monuments of love and fidelity in the world. The Taj Mahal in India and the mausoleum of Aisha Bibi which is located 15 kilometers away from the city of Taraz. Once Karakan and Samarkand merchant Anwar Begim were visiting the wealthy merchant Zengi Baba in Samarkand. The owner had a beautiful daughter of 18 years old. Her name was Aisha. Karakan saw Aisha and they immediately fell in love with each other. But there were tough times, there were wars. The father said to Karakan, No matter how much you love my daughter, I cannot let her marry you. A day later, Karakan left for Taraz. After that, Aisha and Baba Jakantun also went to Taraz. When they were close to the city, they noticed high minarets, a mausoleum and houses. On the way, Aisha and Baba Jakatun approached the Asar River and stopped. They decided to have a rest. 
Aisha was bitten by a snake when she put off the saukele. There are two versions of this legend. According to one version, Karakan Baba managed to become engaged with Aisha Bibi. On the other, Aisha Bibi died near Rasa River, and she did not meet with Karakan. Such legends are still among the people. Karakan married Aisha. On her deathbed, the mullah reads a prayer and asks, Karakan, do you agree to marry Aisha, daughter of Zenge Atta? And with no doubts, Karakan replies, yes. Aisha, do you agree to become a wife of Karakan? And with her strength being on the wane, she gives her consent with a barely perceptible nod of her eyelashes. And then the warriors of Karakan and the mullah himself say, Aisha, you became Bibi. Bibi is the wife of her husband. This was a marriage. Aisha Bibi mausoleum is located 18 kilometers from the town of Taraz in the village of the same name. Now this masterpiece of architecture is listed in the UNESCO list as a particularly valuable historical and architectural monument. Interestingly, the decoration of the facade of the mausoleum is somewhat similar to the mausoleum of Ismail Samani in Bukhara. Now the largest number of ornaments has been preserved on the western wall of the mausoleum. Only a few drawings are distinguishable on other sides. The facial tiles of the Mazara are very richly decorated. The researchers counted more than 60 different patterns. The mausoleum is a square structure with an area of almost 58 square meters. The corners of the mausoleum are strengthened with pillars. In the center of the building, there is a three meter tombstone, almost a meter and a half wide. The western wall of the mausoleum and columns are decorated with small ornamented tiles. In Central Asia, there are many magnificent monuments that have been included in the UNESCO list, and they are famous all over the world. But there is no similar to the mausoleum of Aisha Bibi because of its cladding. The walls are decorated with carved terracotta from the foundation to the top of the columns. If you look at it from this side, then it looks like an oriental carpet. It shines and shimmers in the sunlight in different shades. The mausoleums of Karakan and Aisha Bibi have long been the tallest buildings in Taraz. Local old-timers told their grandchildren that when Taraz was not yet built up, the mausoleums seemed to be looking at each other. However, over time the mausoleum of Karakan collapsed almost completely and the mausoleum of Aisha Bibi was in a very deplorable state. For the period of its existence, and 800 years is a solid age, only the western wall of the monument was well preserved. For a long time, scientists have explored this monument. Even at the time of preservation of this monument, during the Soviet era, a glass dome was put here in order to preserve the ruins somehow. For almost 80 years, this study of the walls of the mausoleum was going on how they were laid out, with what equipment, what composition. They studied everything, but not all the secrets of the mausoleum were discovered. The first to study and describe the mausoleum of Aisha Bibi was the Russian historian and archaeologist Vasily Bartold in 1893. Bartold left a brief description of what he saw. It was a square structure lined with terracotta tiles from the outside with various ornaments. The walls of the mausoleum are 80 centimeters thick. Inside of them, wooden arches from Archa were laid for more strong connection of walls. This wood can be seen through a glass window which was installed during the restoration of the Mazar. Scientists took off one brick in order to show how the mausoleum was built inside. It turns out that with the help of such simple techniques as wood, the frame of the mausoleum was, there were wooden piles made of archa. This is a coniferous tree, both internal and external masonry. From the inside, the walls were simply clogged with clay and facing bricks to avoid their falling so that they were more stable. They had a wedge-shaped shelf. That is, a brick seemed to be hammered into the wall. Thanks to such simple technical methods and the simplest materials, clay and this wood, the architects were able to build a monument of unspoken beauty, 
and which was quite firm as it stood for 800 years. Few people know, but if you carefully look at the mausoleum, you can see one amazing feature. On the 18th row of the masonry, at about three and a half meters high, on the western column, there are inscriptions made in the Kufic style of Arabic writing. These words can be translated as autumn, clouds, the land is beautiful. Many researchers believe that the 18th row with the inscriptions is not accidental. Aisha was 18 years old when she died of a snake bite. This occasion, too, there is one interesting legend which says that this curse was made by her father. When Aisha ran away, he shouted after her that she won't be able to cross the seven rivers. As a result, Aisha crossed six of them. And on the shore of the seventh, she was bitten by a snake. She was not just a girl named Aisha. According to the legends, Aisha was the daughter of Zengi Baba. He was a saint and he was a protege of Koja Ahmed Yasawi. Learning that his beloved was at death's door, Karakan took the fastest steed and went to his beloved. When he arrived, the girl was still alive. Holding her in his arms and seeing that her life was flickering out, seeing it in the eyes of the beautiful girl, he swore that he would marry her to give her his name. He had loved her for his entire life. Seven masters of different nationalities built this minaret of terracotta tiles. And Karakan, I do not know how much he was affected, perhaps having lost his beloved woman. But soon at the mausoleum, he made two oaths, that he will never again be married, and a second oath, that he will certainly build a minaret, which would be unique in its beauty. He had a lot of concubines who gave him sons. At the birth of a son, he gave his name. Therefore, there is a whole dynasty of Karakanids, which entered the annals with their own coins, with all the other attributes that are now stored in museums. But Karakan was never married again. Karakan lived a long life, surrounded himself with concubines who gave him numerous offspring, but none of them became his lover and wife. He kept love and loyalty to Aisha in his heart until the last moment of his life. Now many pilgrims come to the mausoleum of Aisha Bibi. It is quite popular among newlyweds. It is believed that if a young family will come and worship Aisha Bibi, then their marriage will be strong and love will not fade within the time despite any difficulties. Here at the mausoleum of Aisha Bibi, people make wishes and they say that these dreams come true. I met many women who came to this monument to thank Aisha because after visiting the mausoleum of Aisha Bibi, they found the joy of motherhood. They were cured and then were able to have children. Its uniqueness is so great. They say that the spirit of the beautiful Aisha still flies here. The mausoleum patronizes the girls, young women and brides. They go there, wishing with all their hearts to gain happiness, to feel the joy of motherhood, bypassing the mausoleum three times. For us, for scientists, this monument is remarkable because it retained architectural designs. After all, there are not many monuments of the 11th and 12th centuries in the world. We do everything to save this monument. Periodically, the restoration works are carried out. The mausoleum is maintained. All the constructions of the mausoleum are maintained according to the original plan. No doubt, the beautiful story about Karakan and Aisha actually helped to uncover many other secrets and mysteries of Taraz, one of the oldest and historically rich cities of Kazakhstan. The city saw many rulers, it was destroyed and it was restored again from the ashes. The city of merchants was known far beyond the borders of the province, but it was especially developed during the reign of Karakan, or as he was also called, Auliye Atta, because of his honesty, justice and nobility. In consequence, Taraz was named by his name in honor of his ruler. People caressed the history of Karakan's life and his sad and tragic love. 
The beautiful legend of two lovers was passed from mouth to mouth for many centuries. Even now, people are interested in it. Many pilgrims come here. Someone makes a wish, someone asks for health and blessings. There are those who just want to touch the sacred history. My name is Andrei Slojin. It was the Time Puzzle. See you.